Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and revisiting the theme about Eddystone beacons. And today I want to test the Arduino library if we can write an Eddystone beacon and I try also other Eddystone frames. So we can see if we successfully transfer some data from the ESP32 to our beacon app on our mobile phone. This is my setup for today. I have an ESP32 with barely no circuitry and a 3.3 volt voltage source and I measure the current flow through the ESP32 with the one meter and the voltage with the other meter. And with a unity meter we have also the functionality we can see the current flow in time so it's nearly like an cheap oscilloscope. And also important before we look deeper in the software, you can have different advertising intervals. So I test different to see what currents we can expect or what battery life if we power our beacon with a battery. First, let us revisit the Eddystone page from Google so we can have different looks. There are different Eddystone frames. So let's think the common one is the Edison URL so we can broadcast an URL if we near a beacon. But today I want to focus on this TLM frame so we can broadcast some internal measurements from our ESP32. So let's have a look into the unencrypted TLM Edison frame description or specification. So we have some fields for the frame type. We have a version. We have some bytes for the battery voltage in one millivolt per bit. And we have also a temperature. And also we can use the advertising count or I don't know what's PDU, but I use this for how many advertising frames we send. And also we can send the time since we power on our ESP32. And that's all for the Eddystone TLM frame. So this is the small Arduino sketch I came up with and it's based on the BLE server example. But I throw mostly everything out and just keep some small parts. So let's start with the setup routine. Sure, we initialize our serial monitoring. Then I get some timestamp I used from my deep sleep example. This is also from the deep sleep example, just the initializing of the last timestamp. Then we have to start our BLE device and create an Bluetooth or Bluetooth low energy server, software server, and just get a pointer to the advertising. Then we start the beacon, start the advertising, then this is a little bit important because I've seen if we just do a small delay, then sometimes the advertising packages are not sent. So I came up with this 100 milliseconds advertising delay. Then I stopped the advertising, but this is not necessary because after this we just went to the deep sleep for a given time so we can see now we get in deep sleep for one second but we can use different one one two three four five or what have you and then the esp32 just remains in the deep sleep and wake up and the whole setup routine is go through again now to the little bit important path we set up the beacon uuid then we said this is not, we can do measurement, but today I just use a fixed value for the voltage sending. Then I set a temperature variable, but this is just overwritten with the internal sensor. So we get a Fahrenheit reading and then calculate the Celsius reading and use this for, for the beacon frame. The same with the milliseconds, we just use the stored seconds we power up our ESP32 
And then we prepare the advertising data. So we have an advertising object and just set the advertising data. We start by setting the flags for the BLE frame. Then we set our BLE beacon UUID, the 16-bit UUID. And we start with the Eddystone frame. And as also, if you remember from the Google side, we have to set the 20 hexadecimal 20 to use the Eddystone TLM frame. Then we set a version. I used the version zero and we just use our battery voltage with this two bytes, then two bytes, the beacon temperature. And if you remember, the beacon temperature is just a float value. We have converted to a 16-bit variable. And then we throw out our boot count and the boot count is stored while we go to deep sleep and we have to go up our small variable. And the boot count and also the last time is just an attribute we store in the RTC clock. So it's stored while deep sleeping and all other variables are, are just freshly initialized after boot up. So this is the four bytes for the boot count. And we also have four bytes for the startup time since we power on our ESP32. And when we just set our advertising data via this method with our UUID and all the data, and then we set the scan response data with the advertising data and that's it. And now sh I show you the recorded screen from the NIF Connect application from Nordic Semiconductor just with the scan result for our Eddystone beacon. So we can see all the Eddystone packages and just see the data we have sent it. So we see the battery voltage, the temperature, the internal temperature. We see the advertisement count and also the time since power up. Now we can press the scan button and we see the fresh packages from our Bluetooth device. So we see all the data are freshly received from our beacons. Only the battery voltage are stay constant because we are sending a constant value. But all the other values are constantly changed from our beacon. And with the app, we can also confirm this is the Eddy Stone TLM frame and we can visit or show the raw data or the frame data. And just after playing around, so I just leave them a beacon for some hours or some time and see how the beacon is sending and all the packages are just updated every time. And we can also play around with the showing of the advertising strength in this view or we can see the raw Bluetooth package data. Now I show you also my bench setup. This is the ESP32 raw module without any serial converter or voltage regulator. And as you see, I have also two multimeters, one for the current and one for the voltage. So we can see what current we see on the meter while we are sleeping or while the Bluetooth low energy packages are sent. And to stabilize the voltage, I added an electrolytic capacitor just to smooth out some spikes on our voltage source. So now have a look at our two meters, the unity meter showing the current in milliampere. And we see that in deep sleep mode, we nearly use no current. And this is in the micro ampere range. But if we wake up, then we boot our ESP32. And if we initialize our Bluetooth low energy, then we see that we nearly have a current of about 
about 120 140 milliampere and this is only the spikes that are shown in the meter i not so sure if the spikes are a little bit higher if we just have a really really fast oscilloscope connected and as we see the whole frame for sending the eddystone advertising package and then go to deep sleep takes around 500 milliseconds if we see our display and if we also look at the fluke meter for the voltage we see that we get a nearly stable 3.3 volt voltage while in deep sleep but if we start up our esp32 then we see that we really get a voltage drop while starting up our ESP32. So we have to take care of this if we run this from a battery or whatever voltage source we use. So that's all for today. I hope you learned something and find this interesting and useful. So I hope you share this video or like or give some comments. Or if you're not already subscribed to my channel, just subscribe. And I thank you for visiting and wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.